Matt, Tech and Fala. Uh, last summer, I was uh, volunteering at a school for children with HIV outside Bangalore, India. And I decided to make a film, a documentary about these kids. Of course, I had no idea how to make a documentary, so uh, I was lucky enough for a local, uh, a family friend to uh, offer to have a local filmmaker help me out. So I called him up, and he said I could come meet with him at his office in an area of Bangalore called Dongwur. So I went. Uh, so my grandmother, who actually also lives in Bangalore, uh, offered to have her driver, a young man named Mangesh, drive me there. Uh, I had met Mangesh before. Uh, I visited India a few times, and I knew that he worked for my grandmother for many years. So uh, it wasn't too awkward, except for the fact that he didn't speak English. So uh, I found myself in the back seat of Mangesh's car, and we're driving to Dongbur. And through some trial and error and some luck, we finally make it. Now we're looking for the filmmaker's specific office. And uh, we're looking around, and I notice that the signs are in English, Hindi, the national language, and Kannada, the local language. And Mangesh looks really confused as he's driving, and I, I'm pretty confused too, this is all foreign to me. And Mangesh would stop the car after every 100 meters or so, and he would say, is this it, is this it, is this it, pointing in every direction. And in the midst of all this confusion, it finally hit me. Mangesh couldn't read. We didn't end up finding the filmmaker's office, so we just gave up. Uh, the next weekend, I visited my grandmother, and I asked her about Mangesh, and it turns out Mangesh grew up in Bangalore. Uh, he attended the public schools in Bangalore with his siblings, and uh, after about the eighth grade or so, they all failed. They dropped out. It appeared as though the system had forced, uh, kept on going through the, eighth, uh, the system through their schools through the, until the eighth grade until uh, they all failed, and after many attempts. So I wonder uh, if they had any skills. If, they would, uh, if there are any skills at all that they had received. So, uh, I, I also loved visiting my grandmother on the weekends. Uh, she had this cook, Rena. Uh, she was awesome. She could easily uh, be on Top Chef and just take everyone down. <laughs> and she's super smart, super smart. Uh, Rena grew up in a rural area of India called Orissa. Uh, her parents are farm workers and they make about a dollar a day. So once Rena uh, reached the eighth grade, she uh, came to work for my grandmother, and uh, she had an okay salary, and my grandmother decided that she wanted to help her gain some life skills, be, be able to make a living for herself. So she enrolled her in a tailor class. Rena went to this class, and after her first day, she came back in tears, frustrated, and vowed not to return. My grandmother asked her what the matter was, and as it turns out, Rena did not understand the basic arithmetic needed to measure and cut fabric needed to make a shirt. So it seemed as though Rita went through the public school education system in India and didn't seem to have any basic skills, the most basic skills for any kind of work. Now, it, after hearing these stories, it finally occurred to me, I was convinced that India's public school system appears to be failing the, a lot of its underprivileged children. And this is not just a phenomenon that is just happening in India. It's happening worldwide. Globally, 60 million children do not receive primary education. And 37% of all children, over one-third of children, don't even reach secondary school. And the poorest sections of these uh, children are the most affected. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that I was volunteering at a school uh, in India. This school is called the Sneha Care Home. It's home to about 125 kids, most of whom are orphans, and all of whom have HIV. They're probably among uh, one of the most disadvantaged groups in India, because people with HIV, there's such a heavy stigma against HIV that uh, they're discriminated and ostracized from their own families and their communities. Let me play a short video of my interactions with these kids. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you guys today? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, that's good. Okay. So do you guys remember what we were working on last week with all the types of words? Um, yes, yes. Nouns, nerves. Can anyone uh, name? Yeah, yes, yeah, on this. Eat, that's good. Yeah, anything else? Yeah, play. Yeah, what? What else? Run. Run. Yeah, good. Walk. Okay. Speak. Yeah, what else? Study. That's, yeah, that's, that's important. <laughs> yeah. Here. Writing. Writing, right, right, yeah. Dancing. Sleep. Yeah, sleep. I love sleep. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Uh, and then, the, what else? Someone? Adverb. Adverb, good. Adjective. Okay. Adjective. Adjective. Adjective, great. Yeah. What? Conjecture. Conjecture. That's good, yeah, you remember. Conjecture. Uh, okay, yeah, conjunction. Yeah, you had that. Adjective. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, What are, you, what are your responsibilities as a, as a minister? To take care of all the children, to take care of the environment, to take care of the environment, and many things. Aren't they great? <laughs> and my hair, that was something else. <laughs> so, all of these kids uh, spoke English fluently. They spoke with a great deal of confidence. They could read and write and do basic arithmetic, and they seemed well on their way to bright futures. What was different about the education that these kids are receiving at Sneha Care compared to what Mangesh and Rina received in India's public schools? I was determined to find this out, and what I discovered was quite amazing. Uh, three years ago, when I discovered that Sneha Care wasn't getting enough funding, I decided to start my own nonprofit organization to do whatever I could to make sure that these kids could receive uh, good education and meet their highest potential. And uh, I spent the last few summers there volunteering and working and living with these kids. And what I discovered was that Sneha Care's educational program was actually a model that could be used as a template for underdeveloped communities around the world who want to educate their children. And I like to refer to this as the new model. Let me explain this model in three parts. Number one, communication skills. These kids were all taught English, the national language Hindi, and the local language Kannada. There was a great emphasis on verbal communication so that they'd be able to be confident when speaking with other people. They were, they were taught to introduce themselves properly and ask questions to the people that, I, that they met. Uh, when I first met a kid named Kunith, uh, he's 11 years old, and I've been working with him for a while, uh, he asked me not just my name, but about my life in the US, about my friends, my school, uh, how, what the weather was like here, the food I ate, the sports I watched, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, number two, building confidence. Uh, confidence is really emphasized at Seha Care Home. Uh, the kids are able to communicate with themselves and with outsiders, and that really elevated their confidence. Uh, there's a lot of positive reinforcement in the classrooms as well. Uh, they're not afraid to ask questions or, or give answers that could be right or wrong in their classes. They're really able to freely express themselves. And I also didn't realize that the sports field was a big confidence booster as well. Uh, I was there one Saturday morning, and all the kids decided to do, on the fly, just a 5K run. So I went with them on this 5K run, and after 5K, I was a bit winded. But half of these kids decided to go on for another 5K, a total of 10K. I, of course, did not go for this additional 5K, but these kids are HIV positive, running 10K in the sweltering heat of Bangalore. If, if that's not confidence, I really don't know what is. Number three, a sense of community. Sneha Care Home was built around a sense of community. The kids were not encouraged to compete with one another. They were supposed to help each other. They, they were energized in doing so, so that they could succeed and survive together. Uh, I also noticed that Sneha Care was a big promoter of self-sustainability and sustainable development. The kids were in charge of taking care of a massive vegetable garden, and I was eating all my meals with these kids, and I noticed that the vegetables being served were the same ones that they had themselves produced. So, I think it was really effective in promoting sustainable development. And they also had to compost and they had to produce biogas bio for cooking. All these really environmentally friendly things. So what is the journey ahead for these really motivated kids to complete their high school equivalency and consider things like jobs or college? Well, it's really hard to get uh, qualified teachers to come to these rural areas. So we're considering MOOCs, massively online open courses like Khan Academy. Uh, and we would complement this by having mentors come in to help them uh, with basic computer, computer skills. But on the weekends and the uh, nights, we will have actual professional teachers come in and help enhance their professional skills. We're also considering internships for these kids because they have to be able to know how to work in a work environment when they're trying to get a job in the workforce. It's uh, extremely uh, important that these kids are confident when they're applying for a job because there's such a heavy stigma against HIV in India that it's, uh, they're discriminated a lot from job opportunities, so they need to present themselves as professional, skilled people to secure a job. My dream is that these kids, my friends, are able to achieve their highest potential in life. My dream is that a model like our new model can reverse the existing trend in education. Millions of children around the world are put at a disadvantage due to the existing education model in developing countries. 
In order for education to be sufficient for the 21st century, we need to go beyond content. So the American philosopher John Dewey once said, education is not about preparation for life. Education is life itself. I sincerely believe that this new education model can reverse the existing trend and help these kids in developing countries uplift their own economies. Thank you very much.